my testimony. Um, that little song I just sang, I learned when I was a little boy in Eastern Kentucky. In my grade school, every Wednesday, they would march us into the little auditorium, and these uh, ladies would come up on stage, and they would tell the Bible stories, and they would sing songs like this. And it stayed with me all my life. And uh, so I'm thankful for that heritage. Uh, these days we can't do that, but uh, all over those those mountains in eastern Kentucky and Pike County, those ladies would, uh, they were called the morning stars. <clears throat> and I'm sure they're in heaven right now, but a lot of those songs uh, I still remember. One of them was, do you know, old Christian, you're a sermon in shoes. So know it, show it, live it, give it, walk it, and talk it, a sermon in shoes. And a lot of those songs are just stick in my mind. If you go back home, somebody in my generation and everybody in that whole area knows, knows all those songs. So uh, that, was, that was my earliest influence, so I guess the gospel. <clears throat> um, so being from eastern Kentucky, uh, the mountains and the creeks and the whole mountains was my playground. So, uh, and I had a musical family, my grandparents uh, and all my aunts and my mom and played music and uh, so that's where I get my, my skills from. Um, but uh, there's seven words that changed my life and I want to share those words in a few minutes. But, uh, uh, those words may not mean much to you, but they were my words uh, that I needed at a certain time in my life. And uh, so as a young boy, running around those hills, playing in the creeks and in the mountains, um, everything was good. I had a lot of good influences, my family, a lot of good times, music, <clears throat> hunting and fishing. But... As, as you get older, in your teens, you start having some bad influences, uh, letting people impress you with, with bad things, and I started running with the wrong crowd. And um, got into a lot of drugs, and I was about 15 years old. Probably close to Will here. And um, started running with those guys and just smoking marijuana, all kinds of drugs. Uh, alcohol, whatever it was just to get a high and escape. And um, family going through a divorce, left her on her own devices. And I still had good neighbors and a good family. I had a good great grandmother who was, who was a good influence on me and my grand, grandfather and uh, that good mother. But I started running with the wrong crowds. And um, so I'm reminded that, you know, the devil, he's fun in the back seat. He always, you know, it's a joy ride, right? But he always wants to get in the front seat. And then after a while, he wants to grab the wheel, okay? And he wants to just to take you out. So, um, back in those days, we didn't call it substance abuse. We called it a dope head. So that's basically what I was, a dope head. It got bad. Um, and I just got tired of throwing up. I got tired of being sick. I got tired of just going from one high to another high. My grandmother was, was a good Christian woman and she had a good influence on me. And my, my sister, she started going to the church and she got saved. But there was a little church there called Pinson Fork Church of God of Eastern Kentucky. And right in this area where I lived, there was um, it was like the epicenter, if you will, back in the hills. And one was the grade school, uh, and then there was the general store, and right beside the general store was the Pinson Fork Church of God. And right there is where the roads split. One went to McVeigh, and one went to Runyon's Branch, and um, so that's where everybody hung out either at the store. <coughs> Of course, I went to school. But I had a neighbor, and her name was Lula Phillips, and she lived right next to me. But a, a 
a lot of those folks went to the Pits and Fork Church of God. That's where we heard about it. And um, so one day we, all of us, got, three of us guys were sitting on the on this uh, bench, if you will, at the grade school after hours, maybe on a weekend or a Sunday or a Wednesday night or something. <clears throat> And Lula walked walked by us. Of course, we were probably getting high or something. And these are the seven words that changed my life. And she said, I'd like to invite you, you guys to church sometime. Of course, we said, yeah, yeah, that'd be good. But as she walked away, she said, and these are my words that changed my life. She said, it's where you'll find your peace. And those words hit home with me, and I was under conviction. And I began to think about that. And the people was praying, the pastor was praying. The little community knew, by way of my sister, she was, going, she was already in the church, that God was working on me. So one Sunday night, I, I took Lula Phillips up on that, and I said, I, I need that peace that she talks about. And uh, so the preacher preached. This is a, a church of about 30 people back in those days. Right near the creek. You had to walk over the creek and walk up the steps of the church. And you know, a few people, ladies and a few men. But after the pastor preached, and I was under heavy conviction and knew I wanted my life changed, I wanted that peace that Linda Phillips talked about. So I went up and prayed. And I remember the words I prayed. And I didn't pray a thing. All I did was cry. And I was on that green carpet. Where so many souls were saved. Right there, no doubt. And all I could do was cry. And I heard a lady in my, in my ear, Edith, from Saints. And she said, God is near to those of a contrite heart. Those are my memories of that day. Now, it took me about 10 years to look up the word contrite, okay? But that means sorrowful. So God is near those of a contrite heart. He lives among those that are sorrowful and broken and busted up, and that was me. So God miraculously saved me that night and changed, changed my life in an instant in just one short prayer and just giving it all to him and giving, it, giving up everything and um, so I remember that night leaving that church and these are memories I'll never forget so we're walking out and I, I was a brand new Christian we're talking five minutes or ten minutes and everybody had left and uh Edith, the pastor, and Edith's husband was locking the door up because I didn't know what to do next. Right? Here I'm a Christian. And this was in the fall time of the year. And uh, no noise out there. And I just walked out on this, on this uh, steps, going down from the church. And I took a big breath of that cool mountain air. And I was a new creation. I'll never forget it. It's like a brand new baby taking his first breath. So the word born again is a true statement. I was absolutely born again. I went from death to, to life in that instant. And I never looked back. The church accepted me, helped me to grow as a new Christian, uh, good influences, and got me over that hump to where I didn't go back, and I never went back. Precious people in that church. So, um, that's that story there. The other story I wanted to tell you about, it goes along with this song. Um, one summer, summer a few years ago, I was out working on my truck out in the garage, you know, and maybe a nice summer day, you know how men like to do, raise the hood and check under the hood and do things like that, enjoy that. So I said, let me turn on some music, right? So I turned on uh, the radio in the truck, 
106.9, the Fox, right? Classic rock. Okay? Right. So, uh, and some of that, I, some of that I, I like some of that music because some of it's decent, you know? Oh, listen to the music. Oh, listen to the music. So I like that stuff, right? So I continue working on my car. This is the way the devil works, Will. Here comes ACDC, the song comes on. I'm on the highway to hell. I'm on the highway. So I think, okay, Mr. Christian, Mr. Sanctuary Musician, Mr. Uh, Church Councilman, it's, it's time to change that channel, don't you think? <laughs> So I said, let me put on this Christian radio. Let me find these things, because you put, they don't come in very clear, right? It's Caleb, whatever. Yeah. So I put it on there. I said, this is, this is, this is really nice. And then after a while, this song came on. I said, hey, I like that. Wow. So I wrote it down, the name of the song. I'll look it up later. But a few days later, I go back and I, I find this song and listen to it. Man, I like this. So I, I changed the arrangement a little bit to fit myself. And the more I think about it, I said, this is my testimony. This is the opposite of this highway to hell thing. And this is the last thing I want to do and do this song for you. You guys pray for me. Mm -hmm.